like to talk to you guys about um, some accidents that have occurred in the past. Three of the accidents that we're going to review um, were uh, caused by fuel starvation, i.e. running out of gas, and uh, an additional uh, accident that we're going to look at was caused by uh, fuel contamination. So the first of the three accidents that we're going to look at involved the Missouri State Highway Patrol, and this occurred back in October 2010. Uh, during the flight that preceded the accident flight, the pilot had told uh, one of the two officers that was on board the aircraft with him that they were not going to be able to fly for as long as normal because he was going to have to get fuel. Uh, at the end of that flight, he uh, dropped off the two officers at the police station in Arnold and uh, attempted to make a flight out to Spirit of St. Louis Airport about no oh, 20 to 22 nautical miles away uh, to obtain fuel. Uh, fortunately, he did not make it. Uh, post accident uh, examination of the helicopter revealed there was no usable fuel on board and that the main rotor mass had separated as a result of the mass bumping. It's always surprised me that uh, in all three of these accidents that um, each time the pilot ran out of fuel and the engine flamed out that they didn't successfully enter an auto, ultimately got a, uh, a, a blade stall and high speed mass bump and, uh, in each of these accidents. So the next accident we're going to look at also occurred here in Missouri. On uh, August 26, 2011, uh, Eurocopter uh, AS350 helicopter crashed following a loss of engine power as a result of fuel exhaustion near the uh, town of Mosby, uh, Missouri. The pilot, flight nurse, flight paramedic, and patient were all killed, and the helicopter was substantially damaged by impact forces. And essentially what happened with this uh, crash was the uh, pilot had departed from their base and uh, flew to uh, Bethany, Missouri. On the flight there, he discovered that he had much less fuel on board than he realized. After he arrived at Bethany, they actually loaded the patient on board the aircraft and he departed. Uh, his ultimate destination was gonna be Liberty, Missouri. And his plan was to actually obtain fuel um, at uh, uh, KGPH. Uh, <clears throat> which is uh, located in uh, Mosby, Missouri. Unfortunately, it crashed only about uh, one mile or so from the airport. So the National Transportation Safety Board determined the probable cause of this accident to be the pilot's failure to confirm that the helicopter had adequate fuel on board to complete the mission before making the first departure his improper decision to continue the mission and make a second departure after he became aware of a critically low uh, fuel level and his failure to successfully enter an auto rotation when the engine lost power due to fuel exhaustion. So the next accident that we're going to look at uh, involved uh, Francis Gary Powers. And uh, yes, it's the same Francis Gary Powers that was uh, shut down over Russia while flying a U-2 spy plane for the CIA. The accident occurred on the morning of August 1st, 1977, and uh, Powers was flying the uh, KNBC uh, Channel 4 telecopter. He actually had a cameraman on board with him named uh, George Spears, and they had been out, had departed Burbank and flown out to Santa Barbara, and were doing some aerial uh, video footage of some fire activity out around Santa Barbara. He was actually back inbound to Burbank, and uh, discovered that he had uh, not enough fuel to make it, and he had actually radioed Van Nuys Airport and requested uh, a land to land there to obtain fuel. Uh, however, he uh, never made it back to Van Nuys. Powers attempted an auto rotation into the Sepulveda Dam recreational area just east of Encino. Uh, however, this was unsuccessful. In fact, uh, several witnesses saw uh, Powers ejected from the helicopter at about 50 feet of altitude, uh, indicating that he was not wearing his seatbelt, which is uh, even more perplexing. So the final accident we're going to look at occurred uh, February 22nd, 1999, near uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, Massachusetts State Police helicopter departed a heliport with two crew members and two passengers and climbed out to about 600 feet over a river. Witnesses reported seeing a puff of smoke uh, from the engine exhaust. The helicopter was observed to turn towards the river uh, and descend at an angle between 45 and 70 degrees. 
Witnesses stated that the main rotor blades were either turning slowly or had stopped prior to the helicopter colliding with the boathouse roof. No pre-impact uh, failure of the main rotor or transmission was found. An examination of the engine revealed that five of the six fuel injection ports were clogged. Samples from the helicopter fuel system contained iron oxide, which is good old rust, uh, and water. Uh, the Massachusetts State Police had a 6,000 gallon in-ground fuel storage tank that had not been maintained or secured in 14 years, except for a filter change between uh, 1984 and 1986. Fuel samples from the storage tank uh, contained high levels of rust and water, as well as degraded thermal properties. Further investigation revealed that there was a lack of oversight uh, in the air operations and no training, safety, or fuel management program. Records showed that uh, in the past five years, the uh, Massachusetts State Police had provided the pilot with only one training session that consisted of a two-day ground school and one formal training flight. So the NTSB determined the prob probable cause of the accident to be, uh, number one, the uh, State Police's management failure to provide adequate oversight of its air wing. Number two, fuel contamination and obstructed fuel injector nozzles due to inaccurate fuel storage uh, resulting in loss of engine power, and three, the failure of the pilot to execute a proper auto rotation, which resulted in a loss of rotor RPM and subsequent loss to helicopter control. So on the issue of fuel contamination, then you guys know, you know, sump the fuel. First flight of the day, sump the fuel, and every time you add fuel to the aircraft, you sump the fuel again particularly if you buy uh, fuel at an off airport at, at a site that you're not used to. We have our own fuel source here. and We sump the fuel um, and maintain the filters. Actually, we double filter the fuel. On the issue of fuel exhaustion, that is absolutely, completely, at least in theory, a preventable cause of accidents. So, you know, again, guys, we got to get better on, on uh, not running out of fuel here. Uh, the FAA is actually promoting a new program that has been since about 2012 or 2013 called Land and Live. And basically what they're promoting is if you're running out of options, you're running out of fuel, weather's closing in on you, that you actually land the aircraft. So land and live. And uh, sort of in that uh, vein, uh, about three years ago, I ended up finding myself in sort of that same situation. I left out of Carlsbad, New Mexico, flying a gyro to El Paso, Texas. Weather uh, had forecast winds of 40 miles an hour or so. As it turned out, the winds were actually gusting to nearly 60. I got about oh, uh, four fifths of the way to El Paso and saw that I was not going to make the rest of the uh, trip without running out of fuel in a very inhospitable area. So I chose to land actually at a border patrol station east of El Paso, which made for some uh, pretty exciting moments uh, after I landed. But they ended up giving me some fuel and I was able to continue on and uh, life was good.